Shalom. First and foremost, we give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakhak Chodash. And uh, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone. They continue to move very well. And um, Shalom to the whole elect that's uh, continually laboring in this truth, that's uh, continually plowing, that's uh, giving all diligence to making your calling and election sure, and all faith, truth, sincerity. Now, um, the topic of this video is uh, going to be entitled, Did the Apostles Transgress the Commandment of Yahweh Shai? Who these people really call Jesus? And um, I'm going to shorten the title down just a little bit, you know, um, for the sake of getting straight to the point, because, you know, that's another question I like to pose to the so-called Christians that's coming up against us, the men of Great Millstone, concerning the uh, the uh, Gentile issue, you know, and you know we call it the Gentile issue for a reason because, you know, these so-called Christians, which uh, consist specifically of our people, because you know Esau, you know they'll, they'll just you know keep doing what they're doing, but it always tend to be a Jake. That always be the first one to say something. That always want to come up and defend, you know, the, this so-called Christianity. All right, what they believe in, man. They think that the Lord, who they internet called Jesus, being a so-called white man, and they believe that he's here to save all the nations. And um. And they think that the Gentiles talking about everybody. All right. <clears throat> so once again, this is a question that I pose to you so-called Christians, especially Vocab Malone, EJ Love, um, and others in company. Jesus, Jesus is the word. And, um, Then you got Jay the producer. All right. That's a question that I specifically, or should I say especially, posed to, to these guys, man. All right. Did the apostles transgress the commandment of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, who these people need to call Jesus? All right. We're about to find out. This is out of the book of Matthew, chapter 10, and on verse uh, verse 5. These 12, Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and in, in, into any city of the Samaritans, into ye not. So the Lord gave his disciples, which later became apostles, strict commandment not to go into the way of the Gentiles. Right? Not to deal with them, and not to go in, not go into the city of the Samaritans, all right? Because Samaritans, um, just to give a quick, brief um, description, you know, not to deter too far from the topic, but the the ones that were uh, dwelling in the land of Samaria, who were the land of, uh, were known as the Samaritans, they were um, heathen, all right? They were heathens. They were placed there. By uh, the Babylonians after they um, <clears throat> after the Assyrians took the uh, the northern kingdom of Israel into uh, captivity. All right, so you had Hamites that were dwelling in the land of Samaria during that time when uh, Yahusha was there with the twelve disciples. That's why he told the disciples not to go. Into the city of the Samaritans. All right. That's verse six. It says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we told him, look, don't go into the way of the Gentiles. We're not, you know, not to have any dealings with them. 
but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. Now, um, I want to grab another precept. Should be in um, the book of John, uh, the fourth chapter. Now, it's the book of John, chapter 4, verse 6. So now Jacob's well was there, and Yahweh shot therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria. Oh, now wait a second. Now, Yahweh Shai told him, Let any in the city of the Samaritans enter ye not, because once again the Hamites were dwelling in that city. So there, there was a woman of Samaria that came to the well to draw water. All right. Now reading on, it says, Yahweh Shai saith unto her, Give me to drink. All right. I'd like to make a quick, quick uh, point. You know, Yahusha didn't ask her, you know, to give me a drink. No, he told her to give me something to drink. All right. You know, just throwing that out there for you, you know, you silly Christians that like to, especially, um, Jesus is the word, you know, following behind your woman, you know, letting your woman tell you what to do. You know, basically she got you wrapped around your finger, bro. All right. She, she, she's the one calling the shots. Okay. Verse 8 it says, For the disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, which was, was a Hamite, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. All right, there's a reason why the Jews don't have any dealing with the Samaritans. Once again, they were Hamites. All right. Verse 10 it said, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of the Most High, who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, from whence then hast thou that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the will? And drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. All right. Now, she was speaking about, he said, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself? Because <clears throat> you had, um, especially during this time, you have uh, something that's called. The Phoenician, if I'm not mistaken, I have to look it up again, but you have something called the Phoen the Phoenician Jews, if I'm not mistaken, and what they're called. I have to go back in my notes. But uh they were raised up. Um and um uh, they were raised up in what you call today is uh Judaism. All right. But they were Hamites. All right. So you have for the Phoenician Jews, which they call themselves Jews, but they're not. All right. But they were brought up in um <clears throat> once again what you call uh Judaism. The same thing that happened um when you had uh John John Hyrcanus that um forced the Edomites, which were so called white people, to uh practice the customs of the Israelites. All right. You had the same thing that, that went on with on with the Hamites. They were being um taught to uh, keep the customs of the Israelites. That's why you have a uh, a certain uh group today, which are called the Phoen uh, the Phoenician Jews, which once again they're not really the Jews, they're Hamites. All right. You can go look you can go look that up if you want to, but like I said, I had to go back into my notes and um bring out the info. I'm I'm um Lord willing, I'll be able to do a video on on that um uh, that subject, you know, whenever the spirit allows. But Rena says, uh, verse thirteen says, "How shall I answer and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life." The woman saith unto him, "Sir, give me this water that I thirst not." Neither come hither to draw. Then Yahweh Shah said unto her, Go and call thy husband and come thither. All right, and let me skip down a little bit because 
you know, Yahweh Shah was was cutting her left and right, man. All right. Now I'm gonna skip the verse 19. It says, The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men are to worship. Verse 21, it said, Yahweh Shah said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. All right. So that lets you know, man, that she was a straight up Hamite. Because he said, look, it's good. It's the hour is going to come when ye, ye shall neither in this mount nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. It's the same thing that goes for them, the, the people that call themselves uh, Phoenician Jews. All right. It's going to come a point in time to where you're not going to worship at this mountain nor at Jerusalem. Nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. All right. Verse 22 says, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. All right. Same thing we say today. We know what we worship. Us here, the men of Great Millstone. All right. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. All right. There it is again, man. Now he told us, he said, look, the salvation is of the Jews. All right. Verse 23 said, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it on that, man. Uh, I want to go to. Uh, there was a vision that was showed uh, the Peter that I want to get. Um, let's see if I can get it. Now, it's the book of Acts, chapter 10. Uh, let's see. It's Acts, chapter 10, verse uh, 11. Actually, um, we start at verse 9. It says, On the morrow, as they went on their journey and draw nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they had made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open in a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. All right. <clears throat> now, that falls in line with prophecy. Right, because he said there was a great sheet that was knit at the four corners and, and let down to the earth. So that represented the four corners of the earth. All right. Now the prophecy speaks about how Israel was to be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. Now, like I said in the previous video that I did concerning the Gentiles, that's why you're gonna have Israel. That's not they're not gonna they're not all gonna look like you no know, so called Negro, you know, Hispanic, Native American. They're, they're gonna look like other nations, they're gonna look like so uh, Moab, Ammon. They're gonna look like Elam, or um, some of them are gonna look like Ham. All right, some of them are gonna look like uh, Japhites. You know, over in um, the Pacific Islands, some of them are gonna look. They, they're gonna they're gonna come uh, looking. Um, in other words, Israel's not gonna look like Israel. All right, just to put it simply. All right. Now, um, verse 12, it says, Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Because you got to know, um, know about how, I'm not going to it's not called geopolitics, but how um, migration works, all right? You have a father, right, whose lines stem back to the nation of Israel, but that Israelite man might have lain with a, a woman of Moab, right? And the baby comes out looking, looking um, like Moab, right? Having Moabite features, all right. Skins um, came lighter, and then that um that child or that son lays down with a woman. That maybe of um, Edom or Edomite woman, 
and they have a child, and that child might, that child look mixed like a Moabite mixed with an Edomite, and then that child that looks like a um, Moabite and, and an Edomite mixed might go and um, have a woman of, um, you know, just throwing a random nation, like a woman of Japheth. All right? And then that, you know, it, and that's, once again, man, you're going to have, you're not going to have all Israel is going to look like Israel. All right. But that seed, that line goes back to the forefather from one of the uh, 12 patriarchs, one of the um, 12 tribes. All right. It may go back to Judah. It may go back to uh, Simeon or Zebulun, you know, Asher. All right. Now, verse 12, it says, wherein wild manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have not for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time what the most high had cleansed that called not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessels were received up again into heaven. All right. Now, uh, this is actually going into uh, the Cornelius topic. All right. If you uh, continue reading in this chapter in, in, um, <clears throat> in Acts. So, the most I told him said look what the most high cleansed that call not thou common alright because the cleansing is of the the hearing of the word man alright because if you go into the book of Psalms chapter 119 uh, it says uh, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to the word alright the word of Yahweh by Shem Shai. alright so that sheet that came down that was uh, to the four corners that had all manner of uh, four foot of beasts, right? Creeping things and fowls of the air, which is a diversity of animals. All right. That's where you get. Uh, let me see if I can get it real quick. Uh, Revelations uh, chapter seven. Uh, let's see, I'll lock it. Let me go back up. This is uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. It says, After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with right robes and palms in their hands. All right? So that great multitude that John the Revelator was seeing on the island of Patmos. Um, <clears throat> he said he saw a great multitude which no man could number of nations and kindreds and people and tongues alright so once again all Israel is not going to look like Israel man alright now I want to get um, had another precept lined up Like it escapes me right now, but um, that pretty much is the point, man. All right, concerning Yahweh Shai commanding his um uh, disciples, which later became apostles, not to go into the way of the Gentiles. All right, because once again, going back to John chapter four, Yahweh Shai um. Uh, dealt with that woman of Samaria, which was a Hamite, right? And, um, he told her that neither her or her fathers will, will worship at that mountain or at Jerusalem. All right, the reason they told him that because they were Hamites. All right? And that vision that Peter saw, you know, he, he, um, he remembered that commandment that the Lord gave him about not going into the way of the Gentiles, all right? Because he said, um, 
at that time he didn't understand what that vision was. All right, because he was he, he literally thought that that the Lord told him to eat all those beasts which uh they were unclean. All right. But the Lord told him, said, look, the, the way that the Lord had cleansed, not to call that uh, um uh, not to call that common or unclean. All right. Now I want to get the book of Acts. I just it just came back to me. Um let's see. It's Acts chapter um See, I'm starting at Acts. Yeah, I'm starting at verse 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tones like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation. Oh, oh, whoa. Let me read this again. It says, and they were, there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. All right. So you're going to have Israel that's going to come out of these different nations. And they're going to be brought back into the fold. All right. Because once again, that line is still preserved to this very day. All right. It goes back to your forefather. Whoever your forefather is, that's who you are. All right. Verse 6 said, Now when this was north abroad, the multitude came together. And were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. All right. Now, um, read on. It says, and they were all amazed and marvelled, saying one to another, "Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthenians and Medes and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia? All right, which is the Hamites, and in Judea, and in Cappadocia, and Pontus and Asia." Uh, Perigia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Serene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues, the wonderful works of the Most High. All right. Now we now we just got through reading this list, right? All these different uh, uh, nationalities, Parthenians, Medes, Elamites. All right. Uh, let me skip down uh, just a little bit. Now, this is uh, verse 21. It said, And it shall come to pass, because Peter was speaking during that time. All right. He was speaking. Um, when you read a couple of verses up, this was Peter speaking. All right. Verse 21 it said, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, this is the point. Verse 22 Ye men of Israel, hear these words. All right. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Now, we just got through reading that whole list of all those different nationalities. All right. And Peter said, look, ye men of Israel, hear these words, because once again, you're going to have Israelites that's going to come out of those different nations. It's going to be brought back in. All right. So did the apostles, the disciples who later became apostles, transgress the, the uh, commandment? Of Yahweh Shai? No, they didn't. All right. Now, one time did they transgress uh, the uh, the commandment of the Lord? Because if they did, then the scriptures would have um, put it in there. All right. Because for the whole time that the scriptures speak about the commonwealth of Israel, the salvation of Israel, that Israel is going to be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth and be recovered, and then to turn around and say something different. You know that does that. That's a that's contradiction all all around, man. All right, and the Bible would have been made invalid, but see everything lines up with each other. Okay, so that pretty much uh, hits the point, man. 
um, to the T, Lord willing, um, that um, you, uh, you, Akim, you sincere Akim was edified with this video, uh, Lord willing. And until next time, once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and uh, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. They continue to rule very well. And um, peace and safety to the whole elect that's uh, continually pushing this word, that's uh, defending the gospel against these uh, these wacky Christians and these other um, lost souls. And um, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.